Hello, so in this video you're going to have your mind blown because we are going to write a full code for a MIDI controller using AI, using chat GPT. So let's get started. In the last couple months, the internet was stormed by platforms such as DALI 2 and Midjourney, where you can use AI to generate art, images, fake photographs, etc. I got really addicted to Midjourney, I did a bunch of things, but now there's something new in the market, which is ChatGPT. But what is ChatGPT? Well, let's ask ChatGPT what ChatGPT is. Hello, ChatGPT. Can you explain to my audience, audience, what ChatGPT is? Oh, explain. So sure, GPT or Generative Pre-trained Transformer is a type of machine learning model that has been trained on a large data set of text. This training allows the model to generate human-like text that is often difficult to distinguish from text written by a person. I'm not going to read you everything, but do you realize that I just made a question and it answered to me? It answered to me, but one really nice thing is that it can keep track of the conversation. So can you summarize this in one paragraph like a five-year-old kid? ChatGPT is a computer program that can talk to you and understand what you say. It can make up new sentence stories like a human does. It's like having a robot friend that can talk to you and help you with things. Okay, but where the Arduino, the code thing, enters in this conversation? Can you write Arduino, Arduino code? Yes, I can certainly help you with writing Arduino code. Arduino is a popular open source platform blah, blah, and even explain you what Arduino is. So I have been messing around with that and it's pretty mind blowing. And today I'm going to attempt to write a full code for an Arduino MIDI controller only asking chat GPT to write it for me. So let's see what we can do. So I have here this Arduino with a couple buttons and an LED. So let's try something uh, more simple first. I have this LED on pin 9. So blink an LED on pin 9 in an Arduino. So it said, sure, it can write it for me. So um, pin mode, yeah, 9 is an output for the LED. Then digital write pin 9 high. So it looks like a perfect code to me. So let's copy this code. Let's open the Arduino IDE and even explains you what it did. So let me select my board. Okay, Leonardo. And let's paste that code and upload. <laughs> and bam, we got an LED working. Uh, we can make the blink faster. So now I asked to make it blink faster. So it explained to me that instead of using delay 1000, you can use delay 500. So yeah, for at least really simple things, it works. Okay, but now let's try to make a MIDI controller. Let's to see first if it can do, let's say, write an Arduino code that sends a MIDI note every one second. Okay, so it sent and also sends a, a note after one second of the note. Does this make sense? So instead of only sending the note on, that's what I asked, I asked to also send a note off. So I guess it did it right, let's try. So it gave me some, gave me this error, let's, sometimes you need this, sometimes you don't. And let's see if this is working. Let's open hairless, let's open Ableton, put a piano. So it's sending a note on and then a note off, only asking ChatGPT. Let's see if we can do something different. Send a G major chord instead of only one note. Good Lord. Let's try this. Okay, let's comment this. What the heck? 
Okay, so we see that we can make a generator of MIDI notes and then, then it's up to you to play more with that, but let's try to write the MIDI controller code, okay? Um, so let's see, uh, write. So write an Arduino code for a MIDI controller with three buttons. So this is the code and we can see that it's not really going to work. First one thing I'd like to change is that it created separate variables. I'd like to see this in arrays, in lists. If the button is pressed, send a note on and then a delay. We don't want this delay. It knows that it has to do a debouncing. Debouncing is that when you press a button, sometimes it bounces and it sends multiple notes. So you have to actually set to add this debounce algorithm, but that's not how you do it. But let's just upload this just to see what happens. So it's sending an error. It's not even working. So let's try to fix this. So for me, what the problems are. Um, so, so let's try to make it use arrays and get rid of this delay. Use arrays and for loops add a debounce algorithm. You can see here that I already changed this to this, which is the neat way of doing. Now it is using input pull up, which is the right way of declaring a button wired this way. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please check my courses here below. So let's see what it's doing here. Let's copy this code and try again. We're getting there. So uh, see what happens. Uh, let's see what happens in Ableton. So if you press. It even chose the same arpeggio for us. So it's uh, sending multiple, multiple notes. And that's a common thing you do in your code if you're not really aware of the right way of doing. So we need to explain uh, ChatGPT what's the right way of doing it. So only send a note, one, note on once when the button is pressed and send a note off once when the button is released. So you want to press and just send once. You want to release and just send the note off once. So let's see if that fixes this problem. So let's see now. Let's turn this on and... No. Still doing the same thing. Let's see if we can fix this. Um, so let's try to rewrite the code in a way. So rewrite the code in a way that note on is only sent once when a button is pressed and a note off only once when a button is released. So trying to say the same thing, but in a different way. Let's see it again. I'm not really sure. Ha! It worked! Uh, okay, what else can we do? Um, now we have buttons working perfectly. Uh, let's see if we can make this code more organized. Put everything related to the buttons in a void function called buttons. Okay, so we have our code with a different function uh, where a function like it's a container which contains all this chunk of code. And now this chunk of code is inside this function or this container called handle buttons. So now we need to add the potentiometers. So, so add to this code two potentiometers that send MIDI control change when the potentiometer is moved. Use arrays. I'm already asking it to use arrays. So, okay, so now it added a new function and I didn't even ask, so thank you, ChatGPT. So let's see what it's doing. It's reading the potentiometer and it's sending control change every 20 milliseconds. Uh, that will not work properly, but let's see uh, how it looks like. So you can see that gave me an error, probably because it's sending so many messages that it's just getting overwhelmed and hairless can't deal with that. So. So let's try something more specific. Um, so the algorithm for that is something like, so only send a control change when it's moved more than a certain threshold 
And then when it's moved, send control change for, let's say, 300 milliseconds and then stop and only send again when this happens again. So let's try to explain that. So change the potentiometer part to when I move the potentiometer more than a threshold, keep sending CC for 300 milliseconds. If the potentiometer is not moving than a threshold, don't send CC. So that's basically the algorithm. So this time it stopped writing and then I asked to keep going and then it kept going. I don't know if there's a limit, a character limit, but let's see what it did. Let's try it out and copy the rest and upload. Still getting an error. So let's ask to delete the potentiometer part and let's try to do it again. Okay, so we are back to what we had before. So let's try to write the code for the potentiometer separately and let's try to mix everything together later. So write an Arduino code that has two potentiometers. Use arrays. When I move a potentiometer more than a threshold, start a timer. While this timer is less than 300 milliseconds, send MIDI control change. So I change to every time I move a potentiometer more than a threshold. So it means that every time we move more than a threshold, we are going to restart that timer. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so let's see if that works or still not. And we're getting an error here. Okay, so let's see what's happening here. We are storing the value of the potentiometer in this variable. And then we are calculating uh, what's the variation of the potentiometer. So we store the value in this variable, which is storing, let's say, the, the value now we are storing in the variable called pot value. So in the next time we are going to compare this pot value, which is our previous value, with our actual value, which is the current pot value. So if this is bigger than the threshold, we start the... We start the timer and we store that in the pot value. So if, if the time now less than time before is still less than 300 milliseconds, send that value, um, send the control change. So that should work, I guess. Maybe it's a hairless MIDI thing. So let's, um, let's try to print this. So what I'm doing here is checking if the problem is with hairless or with our code. Uh, let's start the serial monitor. So it's actually working, it's actually working. The problem is with hairless MIDI. Um, so let's see if only adding the baud rate with hairless MIDI, it will work. Okay, let's see now. So we're still having a problem with hairless MIDI and I truly hate hairless MIDI. Um, uh, hairless is always a pain. So let's try to do something that I already tried it and it's really hard. So which is instead of using the MIDI library, let's try to use the MIDI USB library. So use the MIDI USB lib instead. So it really didn't add the correct functions of the MIDI USB library. Um, one time that I was doing it actually did, so I don't know exactly how to reproduce that, but maybe you're gonna have to do some manual labor. But before, let's try to mix both codes. So, okay, now it got me one code with both mixed, but we still have the problem that is not using the MIDI USB library properly. So I'm gonna do some other tries, try to write it in a different way to see if we can get it. Okay, so it generated me two different functions uh, using that MIDI event packed and things like that, which I think is correct, but there's still one thing that I know it's not correct, which is this. Uh, it's not MIDI, it's MIDI USB. So, um, so when sending a MIDI value, change the word MIDI for MIDI USB. So here instead of MIDI is MIDI USB, in this way I spelled. Okay, so I think we might be getting there. So it did that thing again. I had to ask to keep going, to keep going writing the code, but we can just copy this first part and then copy the second and let's verify. 
So this, it's not necessary for the MIDI USB library, so I'm just going to comment. And it compiles, so let's see if it works now. Okay, so um, we are not using hairless MIDI anymore, so we can check our MIDI message in MIDI monitor. So um, it's seen our Arduino. So the potentiometer is working, but the buttons are not. So let's see what's going on with the buttons. So let's try to print something here just to see if it's um, actually the algorithm is right. Only the MIDI message is that's not. So let's see if that's the problem. So yeah, that's the pro uh, the problem is with the MIDI message. Let's find out what is the problem. So if you see how I do in my code, every time you send a note or whatever, you need to add this to your uh, message. After the message, you need to add this MIDI USB dot flush. So so now it's separated in three messages. But I just asked add MIDI USB dot flush. I didn't even add, uh, said where, and it actually added to the right place, which is right after the MIDI message. So, okay, let's copy that and paste it. Let's see if it compiles. Okay, we don't need this MIDI USB begin. So, let's try again. Okay, done uploading. So, MIDI monitor. Let's see. A note! A note off! Oh my goodness! Ah! I think it's working. Okay, okay, okay. Let's open Ableton. Ooh, ooh, okay. Um, okay, so we have the notes. So let's map this to this and this to this. So, a reverb and, and a delay. Oh my god, it's working one note at a time. But it's sort of working, not working with all the notes at the same time. So let's ask why. So I asked it to fix it. The code is not allowing me to play multiple notes at the same time, so fix it. Let's see if it can. So it gave me a new function for handle buttons and also this to this variable, so let's add that. And let's copy the void function. Okay, let's upload and see what we get. So, still not working really fine. I mean, we could, I mean, we could still keep going and asking to change that, this and that, but in the end, we might be spending more time asking ChatGPT to write for us than writing us ourselves. So what are my final thoughts with it? To be honest, I'm utterly amazed by what ChatGPT can do. It can talk to you, it can write original content in basically any field that there is. It can write computer code in many different languages. It can give you ideas for new stuff. And we still have a long time until we can figure out everything we can do with this. And there's so much more things that we can do that we don't even thought about it. YouTube now is full of videos of people doing all sorts of different stuff with ChatGPT. And today I tried to make a complete code of a MIDI controller using the Arduino. Although I couldn't do it 100%, the fact that I almost did everything only asking ChatGPT is amazing. So what is ahead of us? This will replace a lot of people. So not only customer service, for example. You can see this can program, this can write code, and the platform is only in its early beginnings. It is still a prototype. Imagine what it can do in one year, five years, ten years. And here, to be honest, I spent more time trying to explain it than I would do if I wrote myself. So the way I see it now, at least for me, it is as a great learning tool. So imagine I don't know how to write a code for a display. I can ask it to write, write a code for a display blah 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 with the words hello world. That would be a great starting point for me. 
but if you want to make something more complex like I did here, you really need to know how to code. Because you need to know how to explain the machine what to do, you need to know how to think as a programmer. And if you know it, you probably know how to write the code yourself. So I don't think that good programmers will be replaced right yet, but beginners, yeah, you might. But to be honest, the easiest way for you to build a MIDI controller, I don't think that right now is using ChatGPT, but taking my course, the Nerd Musician Pro, yeah, there I teach you how to build a MIDI controller with buttons, potentiometers, motorized faders, rotor encoders, displays, LEDs. You can make MIDI controllers with MIDI cable, USB, or even Bluetooth. And now that you know how to use ChatGPT, it can help you solve doubts that you have along the way. Because then you get the best of both worlds. A course with step-by-step -step lessons, me and the community to help you out, and now you have this amazing tool to help you solve your doubts and even teach you how to write some chunks of code. And of course, do everything else that ChatGPT can. So have you used ChatGPT? What do you think is the future for people like us, programmers, people that are building stuff or creating content? Tell me here in the comments below, okay? So please subscribe if you didn't do, you help me a lot and give a like to this video. So see you in the next one. Ciao.